Hey guys, how's everyone doing? This is the Sentinel watching over Geekdom, and welcome back to another Sentinel vlog. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done a vlog. I've had to put the unboxings on hiatus due to lack of space, and thus a lack of buying physical media. But I'm here doing another vlog again, and this time I thought I'd do something a little fun. On social media sites, I'm sure you've seen them, various 30-day challenges where over the course of a month, 30 days, you discuss various talking points listed. So I thought, well, I'm not going to do 30 videos about this, so what I'm doing is I'm going to be doing in this vlog the Doctor Who 30-day challenge in one day. Now, there's a couple different versions of this challenge around there, so this is the template I'm using. This is the template I'm using. Okay, give me a second. Oops. I know that that's a, a laser sound, a kill sound, and... The gag doesn't really work, but I just acquired this screwdriver, the Master's Laser Screwdriver for my collection, and I just wanted to show it off. Anyway, yeah, Doctor Who 30 Day Challenge, 30 talking points. I'm not going to discuss all these in details, especially the ones I've discussed in past videos, because I tend to stammer and ramble and I over-explain things, if you've seen any of my videos. So I'm going to go through these as quick as possible. Also, excuse me if I look at my phone a lot, because I don't have these memorized, so I need to look down the list as we go. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this. Day 1, Favorite Doctor, Colin Baker, the Sixth Doctor. Day 2, Favorite Female Companion. My favorite companion of all time is Evelyn Smythe. Day 3, Favorite Episode. Now, I think there's two ways to take this one, because further down the list, there's a favorite classic episode. So, does this mean favorite episode of all time, or does it mean favorite episode of the revived series? I'm choosing to interpret it as favorite New Who episode, and mine is the series 10 finale, World Enough in Time, The Doctor Falls. Day 4, Favorite Writer. I'm so glad I did my Missy review, because I talked about this a little bit there. My favorite writer is Nev Fountain. Whoops. There we go. I, and if you want to hear a little bit more about why I like Nev Fountain, listen to my review of Missy Series 1. Day 5, Favorite Male Companion. So in this debate, in the fandom, I do fall in the side of, yes, he is a companion, and my favorite is the Brigadier. Day 6, Scariest Moment. The first half of the Series 10 finale, World Enough in Time, in the hospital. Bill comes across a patient, a proto-Cyberman, I believe, which, it's a Cyberman story. And he seems to be twitching, or writhing, depending on how you interpret it. And she finds a volume knob. She turns it up, and this patient is just repeatedly screaming, Kill me. Kill me. And it's such a tense, disturbing scene, and it's even more disturbing by the implications that the nurses, rather than do anything to treat this man, are just muting him. So that was day six. Day seven, least favorite doctor. Oh, I'm going to get some flack for this. Matt Smith, the 11th doctor. And it's nothing Smith himself did, it's... Because his performance was fine. It's what the show was doing with the Doctor at this point. You know, it kind of started in the David Tennant era, but in the Matt Smith era, it got really unbearable. There was this change from the Doctor to being this sort of aimless wanderer, this thrill-seeking adventurer. You know, the Doctor is a person who enjoys being an insignificant speck in the universe. Like, there's a line in Fear of the Daleks, a companion chronicle, that I really like. Um, the, doc the second Doctor tells Zoe, If I knew everything, there would, be no point to there would be no point in exploring. And during the Tenet and Smith eras, especially the Smith era, there was this shift to make 
the Doctor the most important being in the universe. And I absolutely hated it. For one thing, it goes against everything the Doctor is, you know. Um, if he wanted to be this kind of person with this kind of importance, he never would have left Gallifrey in the first place. And, you know, some of his harsher critics, which I don't agree with, I don't go that far, they, they call this doctor Space Jesus. And while I don't go that far, I do see where they're coming from, and where they are coming from does make sense. I also think in a lot of the episodes I have seen, because I'm still working through the Matt Smith era... A lot of the solutions he comes up with come... I think it's very much... I've had the solution this entire time. And over time... It, it just... it Until the Great Intelligence came along, I think... It led to a loss of the sense of danger, of the sense of threat. Because if he had the solution this entire time... There was literally no point to drawing this out. So, yeah... Day 8, OTP, One True Pairing. Now, in the Doctor Who fandom, I do not ship. You know, there's a couple I can kind of see, but generally, I don't ship. I used to ship the second Doctor's companions, Jamie and Victoria, but then I was told how gross that was. Which, just a little crash course in that, Jamie is 22, Victoria is 14. Yeah. All the ew. Although, I will say this, um, after sort of watching the Daleks' master plan, I kind of put it on hold, and listening to the Suntarans, an early adventure from Big Finish, I actually kind of ship Steven and Sarah. <laughs> Day 9, Favorite New Who Series, Series 10. Series 10, I think, is Capaldi's best series as the 12th Doctor, and adding in the Matt Smith era, I think it is Stephen Moffat's best series as showrunner. Day 10, favorite theme song. Did I just say Day 10? Well, favorite New Who series was Day 9. So, Day 10, favorite theme song. I'm going to answer this in two ways. So, if we're talking the complete opening sequence, you know, the visuals, the titles, and the music and everything, my favorite is currently Jodie Whittaker's, Series 11. Although, I will say previously, it was Patrick Troughton's. However, if we're just talking the theme itself... If we're just talking the arrangement of the music, my favorite is The War Doctors. Day 11, favorite actor, Colin Baker. And there's just something really admirable about how he did the 12th, uh, the 6th Doctor, excuse me, because even when he got bad scripts, which happened a lot, some would say, we'll get there, um, he never phoned it in, he... He always gave it 110%. And even in his weaker material, his performance always shone through. And by comparison, for example, and I do still like this Doctor, but there are times, and you can tell, when Tom Baker just didn't care. But you never got that with Colin Baker. He was just always 110%. And I find that really admirable. Day 12... Favorite story arc. Now, I thought about being cheeky and saying Season 23, The Trial of a Time Lord, but here's my issue. I hate all of the New Who story arcs. It's just... Because it's always the same thing. A mostly. I'm getting there. It's a loose string of references crammed into the background of episodes that the finale tells you meant something, so then you have to go back through the episodes and find the references. That's not a story arc. That's only your story arc if your story is a find the hidden object book. So, yeah, and I honestly think axing the story arc, the story arc, is one of the best things Series 11 did. That being said, my favorite story arc is probably The Promised Land, or The Afterlife. Actually, I think compared to some of the other ones, I don't think that one has an official name. Series 8 story arc. 
Because to me, that's the only one that actually feels like a real story. Especially compared to the other ones. Day 13, favorite classic Who season. Season 22, Colin Baker's first season. The Colin Bacon era... Bacon? The Colin Baker era gets a lot of hate, but I think it's really undeserved. A lot of his stories are actually quite good with some issues. Like, really, the only one I don't really like is Time Lash. The Twin Dilemma's biggest problem, for me watching it, is it's just boring, but... And I know that season 21, I'm just talking about the worst of the Colin Baker era and some of the worst stories of all time. But, yeah, no, it's... Yeah, no, season 22 is my favorite. Nothing more to that. Day 14, saddest moment. A couple of these, as you saw, like with my favorite writer, I've dedicated to Big Finish because I love Big Finish, and this one is the same. Oh, so is the next one for that matter. Saddest moment for me is the finale of The Eighth Doctor Adventures, Lucy Miller to the death. If you've heard The Eighth Doctor Adventures, you know what I'm talking about. Lucy Bleeden Miller. If you haven't, I really recommend checking them out. It's really good. Day 15, favorite spinoff. Oh, if you're new to my channel and you haven't seen the video, my earlier videos, go check them out because I've reviewed this entire series. My favorite spinoff, get it in frame, is The Diary of River Song. Day 16. Favorite Dalek story. Huh. Wow, three big finish days in a row. Because Dalek story was actually really hard to figure out because the Daleks are my least favorite Doctor Who monster. I, because I started with New Who, we've all heard about it. You know, that stipulation in, in the show's contract, every series has to feature one appearance by the Daleks. It, it really overdid the Daleks for me, and it's just... I don't dislike them. I don't hate them, but it's just the presence of the Daleks always brings a story down for me. And so, yeah, this one was really hard to decide. But when a Dalek story is good, it's phenomenal. I will acknowledge that. And, but this one was hard to decide. Like, I was thinking of just defaulting and saying Jubilee, a sixth Doctor audio I really enjoy. But I thought about it. It's still a big finish answer, but my favorite Dalek story is... Make sure I get it in frame this time. The Dalek Occupation of Winter. It, just a very tense first Doctor story that, with several layers to it, I really enjoy it. It's very bleak. Let's see. Day 17, least favorite series or season. Oh. Season 19, Peter Davison's first season. It's not, it's very average. It's overall not that bad, and it's got stories that I do like. I enjoy Black Orchid, and I really like Kinda. Kinda might be my favorite Fifth Doctor story. But my issue is the Fifth Doctor himself, you know? He comes across as really petulant, really childish, you know? A lot of his scenes come across as whiny, and it, but at the same time, I feel, especially with Tegan and Nadric, I should add. Which, because this season Nick, Nissa is about as interesting as a plank of wood. <laughs> Only twice as flat. She get she gets better in the audios, of course. Everything gets better in the audios. But yeah, just the Doctor comes across really childish here, and it it just doesn't work. Although I think that's kind of the idea because it feels like Peter Davison being the youngest Doctor prior to Matt Smith. Feels like the fifth doctor's arc is that he's supposed to grow up. He's supposed to mature. But yeah, no, just this depiction of the doctor really soured some of the better stories. Some of the story well, not some of the better stories. A lot of the stories here. I think season 19 is just kind of weak overall. Like, except for Kinda and Black Orchid, the stories are mostly meh. Castro Valva is meh, and it yeah, Castro Valva is meh. Fort of Doomsday is a slog. The Visitation, Richard Mace really saves that story. Kinda and Black Orchid I like. 
Earthshock is kind of overrated. And then there's Time Flight, which, who oh boy. Day 18. Favorite monster or villain? The Valyard. I like what his existence means for the Doctor's future. I, I'd like to see him come back outside of the audios. I'd like to see him come back in the series. But at the same time, I'm fine if he never does. Because one, in the, the Sixth Doctor, The Last Adventure, the Doctor defeated him for good. And two, I don't trust the new series to do it. To do the Valyard and do him right and do him justice. And I just got a notification. <laughs> but... Yeah, that's, but yeah, no, that's not a dig at Chris Chibnall, because I know you guys are out there. I wouldn't have trusted Davies or Moffat to do the Valyard and do him right. Day 19, favorite classic episode, The Two Doctors. And this one was actually really tough, because The Two Doctors is what for the longest time was tied with the Deadly Assassin, which is my favorite Master story, and both of these are my favorite Robert Holmes stories. But despite the issues I have with it, the two Doctors ultimately won out. Because, well, one, the Sixth Doctor, which I love, and the two Doctors is really, despite its issues, my favorite multi-Doctor story on TV. My favorite multi-Doctor story of all time is The Light at the End. Day 20, favorite actress, Michelle Gomez. I think her, as the master, she had the biggest hurdle to overcome because even though they've been saying anything can happen in a regeneration since Destiny of the Daleks, Michelle Gomez really was the first official gender-swapped regeneration because there were some that were not canon. I'm not getting into that. And for the most part, I had issues with Missy, and I still kind of do, but she did grow on me over time. And she, similar to Colin Baker, she just throws her entire self into it. And, again, it's just... I really enjoy performances from actors when, good or bad, they throw themselves into it. Because usually, if the product is bad, they are the best part of it. That's... Why I like actors like Christopher Lee and Kate Blanchett and Octavia Spencer so much. Day 21, favorite quote. This one took me a while to think about, but I think I'm going to go to another big finish one. The finale of Series 8 of The Fourth Doctor Adventures, The Perfect Prisoners. And it's a quote from The Fourth Doctor as the villain explains his plan. And the quote is, The lesser of two evils is still evil. And I like that quote so much because it's one that certainly rings true. It's one that I think people need to remember because a lot of times something's happening outside and I should have closed my window because but I can't because I have a fan in there because the weather suddenly decided to remember that I live in a desert. So it's 80 degrees. But, no, yeah, I really like this quote, the lesser of two evils is still evil, because I feel like when a lot of people make choices, they forget that, you know? It's like, oh, I went with this because it's the lesser of two evils. That's not a good thing, still. That's still not a good thing. And there's really nothing more to say on that. Quote. Day 22. Well, this one's outdated. Favorite Christmas special. If we're just talking the Christmas specials, Twice Upon a Time. Yeah, it has issues, especially with its depiction of the first Doctor, but when it hits, it really hits. Like, you know, everyone talks about the Christmas Armstice, which was great. Um, despite those issues, I like David Bradley as the first Doctor. And I like the idea of the Doctor's interaction with the testimony, because that throwaway line really saves it. You know, it's like, when he finally learns what the testimony is, like, wait a minute, there's nothing evil going on here. Oh, wow, I have never run into that before. And Clara. One of the things I like is that, sure, over the course of their lives, the doctors have 
baggage, you know, the Daleks, the Cybermen, the Master, but also at the same time, each Doctor has specific baggage that doesn't carry over to the next Doctor. And that's what I like about the Clara scene, which is really divisive, because it gives the 13th Doctor a clean, a clean slate. She doesn't have the 12th Doctor's specific baggage. Also, if you're a Clara hater, which I know there are a lot out there, you should like that scene because it means... Because her testimony means that Clara did go back to Gallifrey after Hellbent, and she did die. So, there, confirmation, Clara's dead. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, favorite Christmas special is outdated, so now favorite holiday special, and for me, that's resolution. Easy. Day 23, favorite Cyberman story. Another big finish one. Yeah, my biases are showing here. The Sixth Doctor, big finish. But yeah, favorite Cyberman story. The Reaping. I... Great Cyberman story, great atmosphere, phenomenal performance from Nicola Bryant, and great characterization of Perry. So, really all there is to say about that. Day 24, favorite friendship. I don't think I ever mentioned it, so it's one I should elaborate on, but I feel I really don't need to. The Second Doctor and Jamie. Hey guys, real quick, I just realized going through this list, I forgot one, so gonna cover that one real quick. Um, Day 25, least favorite episode. Now I know I said in talking points that I haven't discussed, I'd go into them a little bit. This one I'm skipping over, other than listing it, because I'm planning to dedicate a video to it. When? I don't know, but yeah. So Day 25, least favorite episode. Series 9... Episode 2, The Witch is Familiar. Day 26, Favorite Couple. I assume this is different from One True Pairing. I assume this means canon couples. And, again, going to... Jeez, all the background noises. And this Blue Yeti, I'm sure, is going to pick them all up. But I'm going to say River and the Doctor. Preferably River and the Sixth Doctor. If you haven't heard the Diary of River Song Series 2, it is one of my favorite releases in that series, so I really recommend it. Let's see where are we? Favorite couple. Ooh, we're almost done. Day 27. I feel I should abstain from this because I'm not musically trained, so. And that's why I don't talk about music much in my reviews, because for me to talk about the music, it has to really stand out. And. Although soundtrack, and for the most part, I just don't notice it. Although soundtrack does have two meanings. It can mean an entire soundtrack, just as an example. Or a soundtrack I've also seen apply to individual tracks. And if we're talking individual individual tracks, it would be The Shepherd's Boy from Hello Dolly. From, wow. It would be The Shepherd's Boy from Heaven Sent. But overall soundtrack... Yeah, I'm, I'm abstaining. Day 28, favorite guest star. Oh. I'm really tempted to say Alan Cumming in The Witchfinders. That one is actually really tough. You know what? I'm just going to default here again. And I'm going to Big Finish. Classic Doctors, New Monsters, Volume 2... The fourth Doctor story, Knight of the Vashta Narada. One of the characters is played by Pam Ferris, probably best known for Miss Trunchbull in Matilda, Aunt Marge in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, and as Laura Time in Rosemary and Time. And, but, yeah, like I said, that's one I didn't really think about, so... Almost done here. Day 29. Sheesh. More, another one I didn't think about. Favorite location. And does this mean favorite location they visited or favorite location that was filmed in? Because, oh, you know what? I'm just going to default again because, again, favorite story. I'm going to say Seville, Spain, where The Two Doctors was filmed. And finally, day 30. When did you start watching Doctor Who? 
2013. I told this story a couple times before but in high school and i graduated in 2012 you know i had one of my friends say oh hey you're a big sci-fi person you should watch doctor who i think you'd like it i'd heard of doctor who then but i didn't really know what it was so i decided to google it read up a little bit about it and i came to the conclusion oh we're so far into matt smith i'll wait till the next regeneration so Peter Capaldi was my first doctor, and Clara was my first companion, which is why I have such a soft spot for her. Now, I watched the announcement first. I remember it somewhat clearly. There was some sort of fan show or something, I don't remember what it was called, where they announced that Peter Capaldi was the next doctor. So I like to cheat and say Capaldi was my first doctor, but I actually started with Day of the Doctor. But yeah, that was my Doctor Who 30 Day Challenge. What did you guys think? Anything you agree with? Disagree with? Please start a conversation in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe. Click the little bell next to subscribe to get notifications when I upload. And in the description box below, you'll find the link to my Twitter where you can follow me and get updates on the channel. And the link, excuse me, and the link to my Ko-fi where you can support the channel. This is The Sentinel, watching over geekdom, and I'll see you guys next time.